Are you finding that your routine work is replaced by knowledge style work? Is your business and the processes more complex than what they used to be? Are exceptions becoming the norm now? Um, they're not the rule, they're the norm. Uh, are the infrastructure or the, are, are, uh, are the in information management tools that you use a lot more complex than what they used to be and a lot more sophisticated than what they used to be? And is it harder to manage all the change in your organization as everyone is stuck in this analysis paralysis environment? Hi, I'm Peter van Skalpijk. I'm the Chief Agility Officer at XM Pro, and I'd like to tell you that Agile business might be the new normal for you. So if you look at this photo, how agile are you? Uh, would you like to be more agile? And probably not yourself if you look at this photo, but you can ask the same question about your business. Would you like your business to be um, more agile and would you so that you can bend over backwards to accommodate changes in business environment as you can see this is pretty it looks pretty uncomfortable but as soon as you've got the hang of it it actually adds a lot of value um, to what you do so today we're going to talk at, uh, we're going to have a look at how agile business changed the way that we work and also our expectations of the tools that we use to manage that work. So there's essentially three things I'm going to talk about today or that I'm going to look at. And the one is um, how did we change to agile business? Now when did this happen? <laughs> the second thing is uh, how did it change the way that we work? And then thirdly, how do we change the, the tools that we use to support uh, this new way of work? So let's start with the first one. Is Agile business the new normal? So the first thing I'd, li uh, uh, I'd like to have a look at is the change to Agile, uh, you know, the actual change that, that happens to Agile business. And, the, um, and just looking at how did this happen? So, uh, and what do we mean by agile business? So, I'd like to approach this once again from three different angles. And the first one is to look at the dictionary definition of what agile means. And what I quite like is the fact that it says it is a quick and well coordinated uh, um, uh, in movement, sort of agile leap. And secondly, the ability to think quickly. Um, and if you look at the antonyms, it's awkward, sluggish, and um, which of these describe your business? This may not be sort of quite like what your business is right at the moment, or the the way that that, that you see your uh, the the current way that your business works. But um, is this the sort of way that your business needs to go? Is uh, fr from this definition, would you like to have a more quick and responsive versus awkward and sluggish type um, business? The challenge is that uh, that even though you might not be making that change, a lot of businesses around you are doing that. So for example, five years ago, the average product life cycle was around two years, and now it is less than two months. And in consumer electronics, it is even down to three months for some products. So I don't know if you've noticed, if, you, if you've gone by a Sony video camera or even just a Dell notebook, that three months after you bought a specific model, it's no longer available. The whole product life cycle has become so quick and everything around us has become uh, um, has become active and lively rather than sluggish. Our software has gone the same way. How often do you find that your iPhone has installed app updates? Um, mine does it at least once a week on the software itself. And if you look at guys like Microsoft, which uh, in the enterprise software space, you'll find that Microsoft Office seems to have a new version every year. And I hear with Windows 8, uh, they're not. Um, they're now talking Windows 7, Windows 8, and I'm not sure. But I know they've st started working on Windows 9, so they can't use Windows 2008 anymore because within 2011, 12, 14, and by the time we get to Windows 2016, they'll probably have um, one every quarter. So uh, they had to change the numbering convention just to be able to to uh, accommodate the change that we see. Um, in, in, uh, as everything accelerates and, and it goes forward. So if we look at um, 
at Agile from a, from a software perspective, and most people know Agile as a software development methodology. This is not what this talk is around, it is not, um, but it really gives us a good framework to understand how other um, uh, areas of business have adopted an Agile approach. In actual fact, the Agile guys have come, when I say Agile guys, the Agile software development guys have, have come up with what they call the Agile Manifesto. And um, because of this fast changing pace in software development, um, and we can, we can replace a lot of the words in here with business words, um, but what I'm going to do right now is just very quickly, um, it's all around interactions, it's all around things that work right now, instead of spending your life designing. It doesn't say that they don't, there's no documentation, but it's making sure that there's working software, working business processes, working uh, in business intelligence or whatever the case, instead of spending so much time. If you look at um, the BI tools, the whole uh, um, intelligent experimentation, um, I love that term for, for BPM as well, but uh, the whole working software concept, so you get your BI working quickly, get your BPM working quickly, get your strategies working quickly, instead of spending a lot of time trying to document um, that. And then also collaboration over uh, contract negotiation, so there's a continuous collaboration uh, uh, in this whole agile approach. So if you look at soft, the software um, uh, world as a methodology, um, they were the leading guys in this and, I, and, and it's a great example of what I see as Agile as a methodology even for businesses and business processes. And they've come up with 12 principles, I'm not going to go through, through all of them, you can actually um, look it up at the agilemanifesto.org. Um, some of the interesting things are that the highest priority is to satisfy, is to satisfy the customer and to continuously deliver value, you can take the software out. Um, and you can continuously make changes because that is what happens in an agile world. There's continuous changes. You deliver new working things regularly. Um, that doesn't mean to say uh, that, that, that it's uncontrolled. There's actually a lot of control in, in, in the whole agile uh, world. It is, um, it is quite simple, but it embodies the whole radical change of what we've seen in the software world where we've gone from a top-down programming, like um, some of the, myself and, and a couple of other people on this webinar may, may remember the days that we did a structured COBOL programming um, where we had a whole top-down approach. Those of us in Fortran that did, still did um, coding on sheets will remember top-down. Um, and we had to use a waterfall model, you had to specify everything right to the nth degree um, because the, it was really hard to make any changes. And so from a, the waterfall model, which is a very structured, you specify, you develop, you test everything in, 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 and there are no changes to the, to the um, spec at any or, or, or to what you what you deliver, all requirements are locked down based on that specification because of the way that top-down programming used to work, and it reminds me of structured business processes as well. Um, so the release cycles were long, and uh, you couldn't move from the spec. It didn't really work well um, if we look at all the overruns and things. Uh, um, on that where it's a very rigid and strictly controlled process. What has happened with newer programming languages is that we've got a, a, the whole object orientation, which, which is sort of an unstructured programming approach, for lack of a better description. Um, I'm pretty sure the technical guys will, will grill me for this, but I see it as a, as a sort of, we create all these functions and I can call them at any point in time. So if you look at, and one of the things, the key drivers for this was the change that Windows and these graphical interfaces brought. If I right click on my mouse, there's an action that I need to do. Um, so I, it needs to call that specific object, it needs to do what it needs to do, and uh, then it goes away. So that, with that, the whole agile development methodology also started, because I can make these small little chunks um, of ob object code, and I can call it, I can, uh, it doesn't have to be sequential, it's not top down, I can call it when I need it. Um, it sort of created a, a, a a whole new opportunity to create agile development tools as well, where we can shorten the development cycle, we can get products out quicker, um, and um, 
it, it's easier to add functions without breaking the logic, which is one of the challenges that we that you have with with top-down structured programming, and that's why the whole waterfall model re worked well for that. Um, what's nice with the agile software development methodology is that it's flexible and it allows uh, for a agile development <laughs> approach, um, which is essentially what we want in 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 uh, in a lot of what we do in business as well. So does that, if, if, if you replace some of these words that I've got on the screen here with business type words, um, like uh, the one that I just love is the simplicity, the art of maximizing the ma amount of work not done is essential. Now, to me that is really just such a profound statement of what you want to do in business. What we find is everyone is making it just so much harder to do stuff. And our approach at, at XM Pro is really to is really to see how can we maximize the art of uh, sorry how can we uh, um, how can we perfect the art of maximizing the amount of work not done. So the whole agile software software um, development methodology um, quite well known and it's and it's 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 got its challenges. Um, but it's really, uh, if you look at what the objective is and what it's trying to, to achieve, it really suits the way that businesses work right now. Um, so those are the 12 um, principles and you can substitute a lot of the software words with business words and, um, uh, and it may sound a little bit like what your business is or what you would like your business to be like. So um, one of the best definitions I've, I've seen of uh, agility and it comes out of a CIO um, magazine uh, is really uh, it was done by Michael um, Sh uh, Schrag uh, and it's the, in the he says in the first and final analysis agility is is about timely and cost effective implementation and that is a key driver these days things need to be cost effective even doesn't matter what we implement whether it's a software based solution whether it's business intelligence whether it's BPM um, whether it's strategy planning whether it doesn't really matter what it is um, but what he says is that is the key part full stop there's no question about it, it needs to be timely and cost effective planning is nice analysis is good governance is groovy but agility means action Agility implies both the capacity and capability to act now, immediately, real time. To me, this is such a powerful statement of what we're trying to achieve in business. We need to have the capacity and the capability to act. We need to do it right now. We need to make the changes right now and we would like to do it in real time. Now, there are some challenges with putting some of these things in and that's really one of XM Pro's driving ambitions is to is to make sure that we can achieve this with um, with business processes as well. So is that how we should see uh, business processes? Um, if I look at what we used to do in terms of modeling all the as is and to be's and um, and trying to come up with the right thing, um, this whole agility process would get us to our business objectives a lot quicker. So what is a, a agile business process? So I'm just going to quickly um, talk about, and I've got business slash process because it's actually business, um, but a key driver of business is business processes, and XM Pro's business is business processes. So uh, we are not a workflow tool, we are a process management tool, and processes just by definition uh, is not necessarily sequential uh, or, or uh, um, a workflow. It is, it is activities uh, that drive a specific business outcome and they don't need to be in a sequential uh, uh, form. So, so far we've looked at um, the Agile definition of what, uh, of what uh, Agile um, methodology, uh, sorry, we've looked at the, the dictionary definition of what Agile business is. We've also um, looked at, um, at the um, sort of software methodology and, and when we look at businesses, um, we see there's a definite shift in, in business from the predictable to unpredictable. Uh, I, I know for a fact we find it hard to get five people in a room and get them to you have the same view or vision of a process or, uh, or a business outcome 
or, or something like that. So f the easiest way to look at at at, at the um, agile business or business process is to actually look at the drivers that influence this change from a from the, from a very structured approach where we knew um, exactly how wor how business worked uh, going into this whole agile um, business approach and. Peter Drucker coined the phrase. So there's there's uh, there's essentially three drivers, and one of the biggest drivers is 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 the fact that we've got this whole new knowledge worker. And Peter Drucker, um, uh, uh, everyone in the management world knows um, Peter Drucker is one of the biggest gurus around um, uh, management strategy, and he coined the phrase knowledge worker, and. Uh, essentially, a knowledge worker is is a is a move away from doing workers to thinking workers. Um, these are people who have contextual knowledge around processes, and they can make decisions based on this. Structured processes don't really work, and they have to circumvent structured processes because they want to make their own decisions around routing, around logic, around all sorts of things. It doesn't mean it's uncontrolled. There's still control around. Uh, knowledge workers, but it just means th that they can make their own decisions on a lot of how uh, processes work. So if you think back around the, the what I'd explained around the top-down programming versus the object pro object orientation programming, they are they work in a world of object orientation. If they need to right-click the mouse, it needs to respond to that. Knowledge workers are like that. So if they have contextual information, they know something about a process, and I'll explain a little bit more. A bit later in the in the in the uh, presentation around the knowledge workers, but if or, or uh, around this unstructured work, or uh, but as soon as they know if if they have contextual knowledge, or if they know the context in which the, in which this process is happening, they can make decisions which will route it in a different way, or it'll have different business rules. So exceptions for them are the rule. Um, and the rigid workflow style processes don't really work. So if you've got a rigid workflow engine that drives the work that they need to do, that's why they use email. Um, so these used to be ex the exceptional jobs, but right now we find with the right that technology enables our work, that it even goes down right to the lower levels of work. So there's a whole shift to knowledge workers, even into areas that weren't traditionally knowledge workers. So if we look at the second reason why we've become, uh, why there's a move to agile business, it is really that we've become interrupt driven. Now what I mean by that is email conditions us to stop and start all the time. We don't work in a sequential way anymore. I don't know if you do it, um, I, I personally, if I see an email come in, I will stop whatever else I'm doing and I'll to the email. Sometimes I do three or four things at the same time. Not that I do um, a great job of that, um, but we've become interrupt driven. So we are used to the fact that we don't do things in a long sequential logic or in a, in a, in a, in a sequential state anymore. Uh, the other thing that has happened is conversations are, are now 140 characters. Um, and uh, by that I mean we Twitter. Uh, things like um, Twitter uh, has changed the way that we see conversations and how we can do conversations. And it's not just Twitter. There are tools like Yammer, Socialcast, and all of those inside organizations that are now have key parts of conversations in them. That's how we talk. That's how we collaborate. Um, and they're broken up into, into, into little bits. So we've become interrupt-driven in the way. So I can have certain parts of my messaging and conversation in Yammer, and I can have an email, and I can have a whole lot of... Um, of um, uh, 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 different interrupt-driven ways. Uh, we, there's tools like MSN, so I might just also have a quick MSN chat. And Office is looking at productizing what the uh, Office. Uh, Microsoft is looking at productizing uh, uh, something they call Office Talk. We'll probably see it in the next versions of Office, CRM, and all those products where it comes with a built-in collaboration component or Twitter for business, or whatever we ever, whatever we want to call that. Um, the third driver for agile business. So the first one was the fact that we knowledge workers. The second one is that we now interrupt driven, and the third one, which has had a profound impact, is actually uh, Moore's law, which say, and because a lot of the work that we do these days, and doesn't matter in what if, uh, uh, what type of job it is in an organisation. 
uh, we find more and more um, that that people people use computers to to do parts of their work and processing power inside computers are doubling every two years. Now, if you look at this graph, it's unbelievable. Um, if you look at the i7 processor that we have right now in most of our in most of our uh, notebooks that we carry around, you'll find that it's got 2.6 billion transactions uh, transactions on a chip. Uh, uh, interesting conversation with a financial guy this morning said to me. So, uh, how many are there in a packet? Uh, if there's 2.6 billion on a chip, uh, not everyone understands. Uh, <laughs> so um, he, he said it as a joke, but um, yeah. So that gives you some some perspective of of what is happening with computing power. This just drives um, what we can do with computers and the way that we can that we can use it. What is more interesting is uh, Zuckerberg's law. So we had Moore's law came out here. He's, he was the CEO of Intel at the time, as far as I can recall. Um, uh, Moore, uh, but Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Facebook, has come out with with a, a, a very interesting, um, very similar, and he's based it on Moore's law, which is the law of social sharing, which says that we will double the content that we share every two years on social networks. And they base it on what they see in Facebook. Right now, there are around five billion things, statuses, images, videos, all of that, shared on Facebook a day. Now, this was uh, announced in uh, end of September on 2011 at the F FI Developers Conference, so this is pretty recent um, stats as well. Four billion things, and his view is that this will double in the next per, per person. We will double the um, amount what we share in a social way um, or in a collaborative way. So all of these things are driving, um, and it's got a, a, a massive impact on business because it actually drives um, what we do now. I've got my own my own law, which I call Van Skalpeck's law, and I hope it'll catch on. Which uh, and the statement is that business agility will double every two years. If we take all these factors into consideration, Moore's law, Zuckerberg's law, uh, and all the um, social phenomena that we see and the interrupt driven, I predict that we will become twice as agile every. So we'll double our agility every two years. Um, that's from Skalpeck's law, and you can quote me on that. <laughs> then uh, Steve, uh, uh, Keith Swenson and Sandy Kemsley. Um, Keith Swenson is the R&D vice president for Fujitsu, uh, based in the US. He writes a lot on DPM case management, all of those sort of things. And Sandy Kemsley is a well-recognized um, BPM analyst, and she does. She, she also does a lot of writing research, and she's got a great blog as well, which I, I can recommend. And they've come up with, if you look at Agile BPM, in a in a webinar that they did on Agile BPM, using uh, well, just looking at how processes have changed. And what I like about this is that the goal of the system. So when we look at the transactional system, the other, and it's not that these are going away. That's the 80-20 principle. 20% of processes will still be transactional, will still have a rigid structure. But we have 80% of business, and this is from Gartner, uh, that came up with the 80-20, um, Janelle Hill um, at Gartner. But the, 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 what's great about this is that the, that the goal of the system in the past was just efficiency and automation. Now it's moved to problem resolution. We can actually do stuff with this. So it's not just about getting people to do things faster, but it's actually to solve problems. Um, and the, the challenge is that instead of being highly repeatable, it's become unpredictable. So you need tools to, to, to cater for, um, for that. So how does that change the way that we work? I said earlier that there are three questions. Uh, and and the first one was why did we um, um, uh, so yeah, just to step back um, of those three questions the first one is agile business um, and to me this describes that agile business is the new normal so how does it change the way that we work well um, in terms of the three questions, the first one was why did we change to agile business? The second one is, is, um, is um, how do we change the work? And then lastly, we'll also look at the tools that we, that, that we do this. So if I just quickly go back and we look at the 12 principles of the agile methodology, we'll recognize that, 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 um, that some of these have a profound way, 
uh, uh, profound impact on the way that agile business has changed the way that we work. So, so the first one is all around continuous improvement. So we've moved away from this trying to to get one to get the spec for the process, which which was the BPR way, the business process reengineering way. We would spend a lot of money to get consultants in to come spend a lot of time, and it's not that we don't do that. Agile doesn't say no documentation; it means adequate documentation so that we can uh, get the first version out quickly, and we can start improving on that. So instead of doing three years of BPR, we can get the base requirements down um, without spending all our time and money on that and by the time we've got the base requirement, oh sorry, if we do the three year BPR project, by the time we get to do something, all our processes have changed. We'd like to take a lot more of a continuous improvement process, uh, uh, approach um, in most of the work that we do these days, doesn't matter what it is. Um, we'd like to do smaller chunks, we'd like to get results a lot quicker and we'd like to see things happen. Um, a, l a lot easier. And I just love the next slide, which is um, Salvador Dali said, I have no fear of perfection. You will never reach it. To me, that is so, pro so profound as well in terms of what we're trying to achieve. We do enough to, from a, we, we find that right now, um, the way that we work has become, let's do enough so we can get started and get something done. A lot of businesses, especially the ones that perform uh, well, have taken that, um, that approach. The second thing is that we want to do is, is sort of have what we call intelligent experimentation. I love this for BPM, but it's actually a phrase that is used in the BR world. Uh, um, that's where I've, I've heard it um, being used. But intelligent experimentation doesn't mean um, we just, we, it still means that we work in a controlled fashion. We take information from our analytics tools, from the process, uh, from, from our um, uh, Analytics is a great driver for this. So we'll get information out of our analytics tools and decide how we're going to change it. We're going to split test certain things. The, the, the marketing guys are brilliant at split testing ads so that they can see which is the best performing one and they'll drop the other one and then start a new uh, process, uh, uh, ad that will compete with the other one. And so that's how they sort of, um, through an evolutionary process, build um, the, the strongest ad that they can. There's continuous testing. There's no reason why we why we can't do that in other areas of business. And we're starting to we starting we start to see that that emerges in a in a in a lot of that we do. So um, the other the other um, great one that I saw, and this is this is once again Gartner. I can't take credit for this. Is to design by doing rather than doing by design. Gartner has now come out and said. Listen, maybe maybe you don't need to spend as much time on trying to get that or, or to strive for perfection, to get the spec 100% right. Rather, design by doing it, and as you do, you improve it, r rather than trying to do this whole design and get the right thing, um, because you will actually never never get there. We find more and more there's a drive, and this impacts the way that we work. Uh, and it doesn't only apply to BPM, it applies to a whole lot of uh, areas that Gartner, um, in terms of the competency areas, that they apply this design by doing now. So there's a definite impact um, on that. And then also we change our minds often. That's always been the case. We just never had the opportunity to change our minds or to say that we'd like our requirements to differ. Um, what has happened with uh, with uh, um, the new tools, uh, especially web-based and social tools, we have the ability to change our mind often, and that is now getting into the way that we work. We expect things to change quickly. We expect next time uh, that uh, that there's an update on uh, on Facebook that my um, iPhone app will automatically pick it up. Um, I don't have to worry about it. So. We can change our minds often. We can, um, and, and that's got a profound impact on 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 the way that we that we work. So once again, and I keep going back to this, um, but it really, if you take those twelve principles and you and you just apply the business side of it, you can see how this impacts the way that we uh, the the way that we work. Um, so based on that, agile work is the new normal. We don't work the way that we that we used to work. We expect uh, that we will be experimenting. We expect that we'll be changing our mind. So we've we've, we've we 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 have come up with a, a agile work approach, which we see as the new normal. So in the last place, I'm just going to quickly talk around the tools that we need to manage this. So I've I've given you 
um, how business have changed and how the work that we've done have changed. So the, the, the only thing that now still needs to, re that remains that needs to change is the actual tools, because the old tools don't work anymore. The old way that we've done things um, don't work anymore with this whole agile business approach. And once again, I just want to remind you, it's not the agile software methodology, even though it's a great, it's, it's a great analogy around what has happened in business, but this is really, these are business tools that we use, anything from your BI tools to, um, to, to your BPM tools or whatever the case might be. Um, how many of you are still in the water in, in the waterfall mode, the workflow style, um, versus the more structured or unstructured uh, uh, object orientation or agile uh, style? So um, you know, only 20% of the businesses can actually survive on the on the um, uh, on the sorry, only 20% of processes in, a, in, in sort of inside of an organisation will survive on your old tools. The others need new tools, and if you're not going to provide it, it will circum, circumvent that. So, just quickly going back to what we want to achieve: we want continuous improvement, we want intelligent experimentation, we want design by doing, and we want to change our minds often. So, how do we do that? Um, well. With XM Pro, for example, we give you the ability to create this dynamic, interrupt-driven processes. You don't have to draw the flow. People can, can sequence these at runtime, for example. So we've got inside, as a feature, we can do unstructured process configuration. This is not a run-through of all the, the features that we have in XM Pro. It is a very comprehensive, big uh, application, and it does a whole lot of things. I've been, I'm, I'm not even scratching the surface on on, on most of the functionality, I just want to I just want to highlight the fact that if if you're going to use agile BPM methodology um, by getting things out quickly, getting a lot of collaborative design, um, uh, XM Pro's unstructured process configuration allows you to do that. So in the same breath, if you want to do dynamic allocation of logic instead of writing a lot of code and that sort of thing, you can use our new dynamic allocation logic, which is part of of XM Pro as well. If we look at intelligent experimentation, you need, you need versions of processes. You want to split test them against each other. So XM Pro's version management handles a lot of um, what you need there. So, um, and then lastly, just as a as a as an agile implementation methodology, if you if you're going to use agile in your business, and you you're going to make your business bend over backwards to accommodate the changes that, that you have in your organization. The Nexon Pro allows you to do that. It allows you to, to, do, to get processes out quickly. It allows you to do integration to external applications quickly. It allows you to, um, to change the way a process works and test it against another process quickly. Uh, it is an ideal tool if you're looking at a, at a agile approach to fit your agile business and our whole dynamic BPM platform is really built around and we are ideally suited to uh, organizations that, that instead of wanting to get a whole um, uh, group of business process re-engineering consultants there are looking to, to spec enough, get it out, test it, improve it and look at the intelligent experimentation. I just love the term. So you'll find that intelligent tools will be the new normal. I say is the new normal. Um, yes, it is here right now. A lot of companies haven't caught on to that yet, but agile tools will be the new normal. You're not going to be back in the workflow days. Um, workflow is only a very small component of it. So thank you very much. Thank you for joining us on this. If you want to see a lot more around how we can actually, in terms of the BPM Agile methodology, um, free to discuss it with ourselves or one of our partners. And we can also give you a full demonstration of what XM Pro is. Uh, we'd, 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 we'd love to talk to you about um, uh, your Agile or how your business can be more Agile going, uh, going into the future. And uh, thank you very much. Appreciate your time uh, listening to me.